Section one. You will hear a conversation between two students talking about job hunting. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Oh, hi, Anna. How's it going? I haven't seen you since graduation. Hi, Bradley. Things are great. I've been traveling around Europe for the last month, but now that I'm back, I really need to find a job so I can start renting my own place. Yeah, me too. My mum's driving me crazy. I've got an interview on Thursday at a company called Power. I'm pretty nervous. Don't worry. I'm sure you'll do great. Bradley has got an interview at a manufacturing company called Power. So power has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Oh hi Anna, how's it going? I haven't seen you since graduation. Hi Bradley. Things are great. I've been traveling around Europe for the last month, but now that I'm back, I really need to find a job so I can start renting my own place. Yeah, me too. My mum's driving me crazy. I've got an interview on Thursday at a company called Power. I'm pretty nervous. Don't worry. I'm sure you'll do great. Do you know what the job involves? Well, the company has many sections. Like sourcing materials and taking care of waste management, but I'm interviewing for a job in the warehouse section. Wow! I bet that will be really interesting. You should apply too. They still have a couple of jobs left. I found the job I'm interviewing for on their website. The reference is S W three five F T. Thanks, Bradley. That's really nice of you. I'll apply later today. Is there a contact I could ask for? The manager is Susan Thatcher, but you should contact her personal assistant. Her name is Jane Hitcher. How do you spell the surname for me, please? Yes, it's H I T C H E R. Okay, great. I actually found a job listing for a place at Cotton, but the work hours don't suit me. You should look into it. Ah. That's the grocery company, right? I heard that the jobs in their distribution office are really well paid. The advertisement I saw was looking for people to work in the supermarket office, but the pay still looked very good. Was there a description of the job? The company is looking to increase their production of cakes and pastries, so you would be working as a cook in the bakery. After a month, they evaluate your performance, and there's potentially an opportunity for promotion to a management position. That sounds like a great opportunity. I'll definitely look into it. Do you have the reference number? I'll write it down in my notebook. Sure. I also have the reference for a job at the art museum. I'll give you the reference for that first. It's S G H six six seven. Great. That's really near my house, and what's the reference number for the bakery job at Cotton? The reference is A R W two zero four. I'll send them my application this afternoon. Who's the contact? The name on the advert was Melanie, but it specifically said not to contact her in person. You should use the office as your contact, so just post your application there directly. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten.
Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. You seem to have found way more job listings than I have. Where are you finding them all? At first I was keeping an eye out for listings on the internet, but all of the jobs listed there were in the city. I found that the best place to find local jobs was in magazine adverts. Adverts? You know, the section at the back of Job Plus magazine. Where can I buy that? You don't buy it. It's a free magazine. Just go to your nearest corner shop and buy the newspaper. The magazine comes with it. Oh, I never realized. My mum buys the newspaper every week, so there's probably a copy lying around at home somewhere. I'll have a look for it when I get back. All this job hunting is so stressful and time-consuming. I can't wait until it's over either. I'm so tempted just to pay someone to do all this for me. What do you mean? I could go to a recruitment seminar or to an agency. The agency sounds like a great idea. They charge a fee before taking you on as a client, though. Plus, only large corporations hire new employees through an agency. Well, I think it would be exciting. If you decide to go to an agency, make sure you take your student card with you. Your student status is valid for another month, and agencies often give students a 10% discount. OK, great. I'll remember that. All of the placements I've applied to require a referee. I've never had a job before, so I don't know who to ask. Who did you use? I had a summer job working as a waitress, so I asked my old boss. I got on with him really well, so I trusted him to give me a good reference. If you haven't had a job before, you should ask one of your tutors. That's a really good idea. I used to really enjoy my history classes with Mr. Fredericks. Perhaps I'll ask him. I miss being a student. I don't feel mature enough to be earning money and finding a place of my own. Yeah, university was great. Have you heard about their summer program? I'm thinking of applying for the art course. That sounds like fun. Do you have to pay? No, the tutors are running it as a research project. You just need to fill out a feedback form at the end. Great. Well, I'll see you there. Good luck with your job hunting. Thanks. Good luck to you too. See you soon. Bye. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. Welcome to Tower Hill Pageant, a museum that features a magnificent train ride. You are about to board a train that takes you back in time. It will lead you to the most incredible places. You will unveil the history of the City of London and you will experience a fascinating journey. Are you ready? Then, please make yourself comfortable in one of our seats and fasten your seat belts. Now we are ready to start. As we pass through the bottom of the first hill, you are about to arrive in an amazing place, welcome to Londinium. It an amazing place, welcome to Londinium. It was the year AD 43 and the Romans invaded the British Isles. They built forts and they were linked by a network of Roman roads. Then, as you can see, Londinium became a port and the river Thames was surrounded by quays and warehouses. Later on, barbarian invasions took place in Europe, and in AD 410, the Romans left, and the city was abandoned. Let us carry on riding up the second hill and we shall reach Londonich, the port of London in Saxon times. This area was known as Strand and this street was called Oldwich, which means Old Port in Old English. Saxons were not keen on warehouses, though. Instead, they would sell goods and their woolen cloth straight from their boats. Nevertheless, Vikings arrived in AD 842 and the Saxon settlement was slaughtered. The English King Alfred relocated the population to the Roman walls and Saxon Londoners defended themselves against the Viking invasions. But they surrendered to Danish King Cnut in 1016. We are now going to London before the Norman conquest. 
King Edward was known as Norman Conquest. King Edward was known as the Confessor and he had a church built in an area called Westminster or West Monastery. He also built a palace and centralized the financial administration. This palace was located in the area now occupied by the Houses of Parliament. In 1066, William Conqueror was crowned King of England and he built three castles, while two disappeared, the third one is the Tower of London. In 1086, the Doomsday Book, a survey executed for the king, recorded the land and livestock in every city. This is medieval London. While imports would arrive at the quays, the exports were would arrive at the quays, the exports were taken to the custom house where taxes were paid. The trade was handled by overseas merchants, including the German Hanseatic League. However, Londoners also lived near the river. Flames burst out and the fire was a constant threat to the residents of narrow lanes. We are now in Tudor times. As you can see, fine houses were located to the west and stretched from Strand to Westminster. The Globe Theatre was located in Southwark opposite the first stone bridge. Finally, the commerce was found in the Old City and this area was surrounded by the Roman walls. It is important to note that the first stone bridge was built after previous wooden bridges had been severely damaged. It took 33 years to build the first stone bridge and it had 19 arches and a wooden drawbridge, which could be raised in the event of an attack from the south. In 1830, however, this bridge would be replaced. Section 3 You will hear two students called Tom and Bella attending the third meeting of the after-school club. They are talking with their professor about the furniture company. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Before we start, Tom and Bella, thanks for coming in today to talk about the key case studies that will help you to understand your classwork better. Now, I hope you've read the notes I gave you last week on the furniture company Willows, as this will be the focus of our discussion today. Let's begin. Who can tell me what the current focus of the company's business is? The company used to be very large, with many retail outlets across the country. However, since the recession, there have been fewer people spending money on furniture, and so the company was forced to close all of its outlets, and now only operates online. Well done, Tom. Bella, can you add anything? Willows used to produce a very large number of products, such as tables, chairs, and light fittings. However, through market research, they realized that most of their profit was made from the sale of bookcases, so they now specialize in this one product. Very good. Does anyone know how our department began its contact with Willows? Did you contact the company, Professor? No, Tom, it wasn't through me. Our headmaster saw an article that the manager had written in the newspaper and became very interested in the company. He contacted Willows and arranged for a student to work there full-time during the summer. Yes, exactly. Does anyone know what the student thought of their time working at Willows? Yes, he is a friend of ours. He worked as a member of the design team, creating technical drawings of the furniture using a computer. There was a special software that he used, which he said had a bad interface and was very difficult to predict. However, it was very efficient and helpful for quickly drawing up furniture designs. How interesting! Yes, it was. We both visited him whilst he was working there and he showed us around. Unfortunately, visitors were not allowed to access the IT department, but it was great to chat with his colleagues. Did you meet his manager? His manager is a very busy man, so he didn't have time to meet with us. However, we were allowed to inspect the accounts, which really helped us to understand the effects of the software on the company. Well, what an exciting experience. Now, before I forget, next week I'll be conducting face-to-face -face interviews with each of you 
to prepare for job interviews. Can we do it as a group? I'm afraid not, Bella. I want to give each of you my undivided attention, and there will be too much disturbance if I interview you all together. Plus, it will be more realistic if I interview you alone. Have you finished writing the feedback on our exam results, Professor? Yes, I have, Tom, and I must say that I was not disappointed. I am glad to say that your performance has dramatically increased since you began attending this after-school club, and you have both scored above the average. If you continue to work hard, your results should soon improve significantly. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions twenty-seven to thirty. Now, listen and answer questions twenty-seven to thirty. Now, back to our discussion about willows. Can anyone tell me what business decisions might benefit the company? A new system would definitely benefit willows. Their system is very outdated. I don't think it would help them to gain more profit. However, the system is capable of doing the work of hundreds of people. This would, therefore, significantly lower labor costs. I agree. Unfortunately, unless they also replace the machinery in their workshop, the new system won't reduce the production time. That is a shame. If they can't reduce their production time, they won't be able to increase sales. The answer is to hire more staff in order to increase the efficiency of the production line. Yes, you have both made interesting points. Now for one final question before we finish this week's session: How will new clients be affected by the new system? Unfortunately, the new system does not allow clients to connect to the Willow system from home, so they are unable to access their work online. This also means that the system presents no opportunity to attract more contacts, since clients are unable to view it from their homes. Yes, that's true. However, it could definitely benefit clients who visit the showroom. The system is very interactive and allows clients to easily browse the furniture catalog, which will save them a lot of time. It's a shame that staff are still needed to guide clients through the online system, as it means that no savings can be made in labor costs. I think the major benefit of the new system is that it enables staff to design the furniture in front of the client. Which allows them to get a lot more involved in the design. Bravo! You've both contributed fantastic points to our conversation. That concludes our session for today. I'll see you next week. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section four. Good evening, everyone. In tonight's lecture, I'd like to look at LED, an acronym for light emitting diode. Basically, it is a light source used as indicators in a range of devices. In 1907, the British H. J. Round used a crystal of silicon carbide and a cat's whisker detector at Marconi Labs, and he came up with a phenomenon, the electroluminescence. It occurs after switching on a LED in a device. Electrons can recombine with electron holes and release photon energy. The energy gap determines the color of the light. The first commercial LEDs were used in laboratory equipment and electronic test equipment, and later on they were made for household electrical appliances such as TVs, telephones, and radios. However, it is important to note that the light was used as indicators, as to note that the light was used as indicators, as they were not bright enough to light up a room, for example. But interior lighting became possible after the invention of high-power white light LED. The high-power LED replaced fluorescent and incandescent lights.
However, you may ask, what is LED? The LED is comprised of a chip of semiconducting material that has impurities so as to create a PN junction. This enables the current to flow from the P side, also known as anode, to the N side or cathode, but not the other way around. So, let us consider an electron, while it is flowing into the junction, it finds a hole. It then falls into a lower energy level and ends up releasing energy in the form of a photon. At this moment, the wavelength of the light is emitted, and the color will have resulted from the energy gap of the materials used in the PN junction. For example, a semiconductor based on gallium nitride or indium gallium nitride will generate a bright blue LED. If they are added to red or green LEDs, they can produce white LEDs. Actually, white lights can be produced from three primary colors, red, blue and green, or use phosphor material, which converts UV or blue LED to white light while the first one is blue LED to white light. While the first one is known as RGB LED, the second one is called phosphor-based white LED. Now, if we consider nitrides with aluminium, then short wavelengths can be produced. These short wavelengths near UV emitters are useful for inspecting anti-counterfeit watermarks in paper currencies. UV LEDs are also used in sterilization devices as they emit 250 to 270 nanometers and lead to photosensitivity reactions in microorganisms. Another one is OLED, organic light emitting diode. The diode is based on an organic compound. This material is electrically conductive as a result of delocalization of pi electrons. Polymers are an example of this material. As you know, polymers provide us with flexible displays. For this reason, OLED has been used in screens or visual displays for MP3s players, mobile phones and tablets.